The rules are on your handout, so I'm just going to refer to that. I won't put them back up on the board, but we're just going to name some ionic compounds in this context. The most famous ionic compound is NaCl, and what's its name? Sodium chloride. So if you look at the rules, the rules say name the cation or metal, which is typically metal, first, and that's sodium, and then name the nonmetal or anion second with the IDE ending. Now it turns out that's rules number one and three, and we skipped rule number two here. Rule number two, if you look at it, says state the oxidation state of the metal with a Roman numeral in parentheses. And we skipped it for a reason. It turns out rule two is not necessary for the group one metals, the group two metals, and for uh, aluminum, zinc, silver, and cadmium. So it turns out in an ionic compound, aluminum's always plus three. Zinc and cadmium are always plus two, and silver's always plus one. Everything else, though, these transition metals, it turns out in ionic compounds, they can take on variable charges, variable oxidation states. And you've got to figure out which one. Like iron's plus two or plus three. Copper can be plus one or plus two. And a lot of them, that's the case. And so, you know, if I say copper chloride, you don't know which copper chloride I'm talking about unless I specify what charge the copper has. Whereas for the group one metals in an ionic compound, they're always plus one. The group two metals in an ionic compound, they're always plus two. And like I said, aluminum in an ionic compound is always plus three. Zinc and cadmium are always plus two in an ionic compound. And silver is always plus one in an ionic compound. So we don't have to worry about those. But the rest of them, we have to be more specific. So because if we have CuCl and CuCl2, if we skip rule number two, we would say copper chloride for both of these. And they are two different compounds. So we've got to get more specific. So we're still going to say copper chloride. We're just going to save some room for a Roman numeral here. So we expect you to be able to find some basic charges here. So it turns out that the halogens, all being one short of a noble gas, all like to pick up one extra electron and have a negative one charge in ionic compound. So chlorine here, negative one. If chlorine's negative one, copper here to balance must be plus one. And that's what we put in as a Roman numeral in parentheses. That's copper one chloride. And again, if chlorine is minus one and there's two of them, to balance copper here must be good positive two. And so that's why we put the Roman numeral two here as well. Now technically, we could call this guy also cuprous chloride and cupric chloride. For the transition metals, that there are two examples. We often use the OUS for the lower oxidation state and the IC for the higher oxidation state, in particular for the ones where the chemical symbol doesn't match the English name, like copper and iron are pretty typical. However, I'm not going to go over that. I'm going to leave that on you, kind of point of diminishing returns. So I will kind of stick with the standard IUPAC version here. Uh, we can also throw polyatomic ions into the mix here. So in this case, instead of naming the metal, you're just going to name the cation first. So in this case, what is NH4 as a cation? You've got to know your polyatomics. NH4 would be ammonium. Yeah, that's ammonium. So cool. And obviously, we don't have a rule number two for polyatomic cations. So you go straight to rule number three, and you name the nonmetal with an IDE ending bromide. You know what, let's actually make this even harder. Let's throw copper back in. So I'll put a nice transition metal in it that can take on multiple oxidation states. So in this case, you name the metal, which is? Uh, copper. copper. And in this case, we're going to have to put its Roman numeral in parentheses here in a second. So, and then instead of naming the nonmetal, you name the polyatomic ion, and SO4 is called? Sulfate. Good, and you've got to know your polyatomic. It's not sulfite, it's sulfate charge of negative two. And if its charge overall is negative two, then copper here must be plus two. And this is copper two sulfate. You need to memorize your polyatomics. I put them in a text box there for you, all the common ones. You need to know their name, their formula, and their charge. It's all important. If you didn't know sulfate was minus two, you wouldn't be able to figure out that copper here is plus two. Cool. Uh, one other thing to note, if I want to give you an ionic compound that you're going to not recognize, I would give you something like ammonium bromide. So he's an ionic compound. Why am I saying he's difficult to recognize an ionic compound? 
At least, yeah, he's not a metal and a non-metal. So in this case, it's all non-metals. Why is he still ionic? Because we've got a polyatomic ion here. So ammonium is the only polyatomic cation of note that you need to worry about. So and when I throw it, an ammonium ionic compound in there. So I have all non-metals, but it's still ionic. Great trick question on the exam. If I say which of the following is ionic, if I want to make it tricky, I throw an ammonium salt in there. Be careful.